Hello everyone, good morning. On behalf of CFS Society India, I welcome you all to today's speaker event. I must acknowledge that we are having an event uh, in a physical mode after a gap of almost two and a half years. We did something way back in uh, Feb 20, a couple of events in the last uh, months, but speaker event after uh, a gap. Uh, hopefully, the, uh, with the pandemic behind us, we'll have more of physical events, uh, hybrid events, and maybe virtual events, but by choice. Uh, with that, uh, let me uh, uh, introduce the speaker of the day, Mr. Nitin Dharmawad. Uh, uh, Nitin uh, is a co-founder for Aurum Capital. Aurum uh, Capital is a SEBI registered research analyst and investment advisory company. He started his equity market journey 30 years ago as a hobby and ended up pursuing CFA from CFA Institute USA. Nitin bring, brings rich industry background and that helps understand companies' complexities of business and tipping points. He has worked with leading groups, including Crystal and l &D, among others. Nitin believes in going beyond number crunching. He focuses on the long-term value investment idea with strong fundamentals, business operations, strategic directions, and competitive landscape, governance process, and background of promoters, to name a few. He believes that often these are among the most critical items that than just number crunching. Nitin has to his credit several multi baggers He has identified many fraud companies much before they got burst that helped investors. As part of his social responsibility, he conducts free sessions for common investors. He writes various blogs, articles, and has created educational videos on the subject of investment ideas for common investors. He is a regular contributor to leading business portals and appears regularly on various media channels. He is a continuous learner in equity market and believes that everything else can stop but learning, uh, which is a motto which uh, CFA Society also shares, especially the Professional Learning Committee. Uh, everything else can stop but learning. Uh, with that, let me introduce the uh, topic of today's session, Buying the Pessimism, uh, which is an opportunity to buy wonderful companies at fair price. But this is not as easy as it sounds. It requires disciplined approach, long-term thinking, and ability to sustain pain. What are the do's and don'ts, and how to control the nerves when things are not going our way? These will be backed by several case studies of success and not so successful investments. With that, I'll invite uh, Mr. Dharmawad to take over the session. Thank you. Am I audible? Thank you so much. So he just mentioned that this is the first physical event post pandemic in CFA Forum Delhi. Uh, it's just a coincidence that uh, I presented in Pune CFA Forum and that was the last event before pandemic. So I'm delighted to come again in CFA Institute Forum. It's always a pleasure to talk uh, to some of the best of the minds over here. Thank you for this opportunity. So, on a Saturday, we are talking about pessimism. How boring it is. But let me tell you that it may sound boring, but it is very interesting and very fruitful in terms of investment. And we'll see that. But it requires a little bit of different thinking, a disciplined approach. And we'll see how it has functioned, how it has not functioned. And what is the framework? Uh, before doing that, there is an important disclaimer over here. What it says is, uh, the information here is in published with multiple sources. Uh, the important aspect is that uh, we are registered with CV. Uh, we are a research analyst uh, and uh, investment advisory company. Uh, there are several case studies. The most important aspect is there are several case studies that I will be talking about. But these are just case studies. Do not take them as any kind of recommendation. And I'm sure that all of you are mature to understand that. No buy, sell, hold recommendation. Understand, understand the perspective behind investments or losing opportunities in those. Uh, we may or may not have the ownership in those companies or holding in those companies. This, some of this might have been recommended to our clients as well. And we may do contrary to what we are saying. So that is also possible. So think that the vested interest over here while presenting the case studies. 
uh, about our organization he already briefed so i'll skip this slide this is the agenda of uh, uh, today's presentation so what we are talking we'll be defining what is pessimism uh, problem of plenty while bu buying uh, optimism because there are two things optimism and pessimism so when we are buying optimism what are the risks which come along with it uh, what are the different types of corrections and how it impacts our returns why do we say that you need to be brave hard uh, to buy during uh, uh, during optimism or during decline and importance of human behavior this is one of the most important uh, qualities required while buying the pessimism what are the margins of errors and the the most important slide is the framework so how do i select uh, these stocks uh, during pessimism and there are several key studies paper stocks capital goods uh, rush for gold it companies us fda ban on a pharma company covid wave which impacted hotel tourism video it impacted everything but it impacted severely uh, some of the sections then uh, my mistakes so what are the mistakes i made and what are those learnings and uh, we'll summarize that so what is pessimism pessimism basically a tendency to see the worst aspect of things or believe that worst will happen so when we are in the middle of something going wrong we try to extrapolate that similarly when we are in in the wave of optimism we extrapolate that towards getting it even brighter so this is the human tendency while in pessimism and so when when we are in optimism and when we are bullish we try to acquire more and more and that may help us because paper money will grow while in pessimism the reverse will happen you will you will you will be you will be thinking that you are making losses you will exit some of those positions and those may become permanent losses that's the problem so end of the market when corrections happen so what what do we start thinking that market is going to end when the corrections are happening end of sectors when darling sector collapse so what has happened in 2008 9 with uh, uh, with infra realty and power sectors or maybe in 2000 2001 with software companies it companies so they collapsed and suddenly those stories which were talking about you know world is going to change with it uh, nobody was talking about it after after a year or within a year same was the case with uh, uh, realty infra and power because everybody was saying that power shortage is there power shortage is there so everybody was investing in that and suddenly after 2008 9 nobody was interested to look at those companies or maybe infra companies they were saying that roads are required and nobody was interested in road companies because sector collapsed we believed that it is not required and then that throws significant opportunities end of companies when event happen so some event has happened say for example one of the automobile companies there was strike in gurgaon some time ago and stock collapsed and we start believing that uh, it's the end of that company something like that there are so many events that happen actually those those are transitionary events they are not permanent event and we need to rationally think to distinguish between these two so evaluate each case independently and rationally very important aspect so pessimism in the market and how does it look like how to navigate so the most recent one i am sure that everyone of us uh, would have witnessed this if i start talking about 92 94 or 2000 some of us may not remember some of us may not have been there during that time in the market but i if i talk as recently as 2020 which we have witnessed it's there fresh in our memory so what was the headline looking like in in the in the newspaper in the media or you know the analysts what they were talking about when this has happened and it's some in the mid of uh, uh, the crisis this is exactly on 23rd march 2020 when the market made its bottom so business and nothing wrong actually in in this media reports because they are reporting what is there what is happening and as our job is not to think or conclude based on what they are saying we have to have we have to have thinking beyond this we have to apply second level or third level of thinking and then see that how we can benefit from it what they were saying biggest crash ever makes india worst performing market in the world this is a fact this has happened money controls article 
calls grow for bsc nsc to be shut down so this was not su sufficient people started talking about closing down the market because <laughs> it was collapsing like anything uh, uh, market was almost down 50 60% if i am not wrong right so people will actually be under severe stress because of that sensex plunged by 4000 points that day and the impact was so severe if you know that in 92 93 we made a uh, top of a down 4000 4, only you see yeah <laughs> 4000 and in single day market collapsed by 4000 points it was so severe and nifty was down by 1000 points then indian express news what it says stock markets post worst losses in history since crash again 3900 or 4000 po points amid coronavirus lockdown or oh, everywhere the same kind of news will be there. If you are going through news or media or electronic or Twitter or WhatsApp, you know, gloom, doom is there. The week magazine. So Sensex crash was not sufficient enough. They started talking about circuit breakers. So what are circuit market circuit breakers? How? All you need to know. So they were teaching not only about market crash, they were also teaching you about circuit breakers. So you will become experts after looking at all these things. So how circuit breakers will function, when will it, uh, it will be applied in the market. They will not talk today. When the market is going every day up, nobody will talk about circuit breakers. Why not to put circuit breakers today? Why not to shut down the market when it is going up so rapidly? Nobody will talk. But when the market is collapsing, when the pessimism is building, these are the kind of news that will witness. And if that was, that was not sufficient enough, uh, and if we read anything beyond market related news, this is what will end up going through. So this was a video uh, of uh, Air Asia pilot who jumps out of cockpit. Why? Because a passenger sneezes in Pune Delhi flight. This is a video actually, it's there on, on YouTube. So somebody sneezed and there was so much of panic and it was again on the same day, uh, 23rd March 2020. So non-market also, you get to read this or you get to watch this. So more panic will be created, more negative thoughts will be there for your brain to digest. So market related news or non-market related news is not sufficient enough. There are market experts and nothing wrong with uh, the gentleman, uh, Hugo Arkin, who is an economist or senior economist or country analyst for North America, Mexico, India, RoboBank. What he is saying is India is not one of the most attractive emerging markets right now. Actually, if you look at, and since we have the data now, we are in 2022, we have the luxury to look at what has happened in the past. Actually, we were the most attractive one that time. Because he is also suffering from the same kind of pessimism, which has been built over there. And when the pessimism is there, our thinking starts to justify what everybody else is thinking. And finally, one FinTwit account with 400,000 followers asking to stop short selling. And I was telling you just a while ago that when the market is going up, nobody talks you, nobody tells you to shut down the market. It's only when the markets are going down, they are asking to shut it down. So uh, before I move further, I'll show you a sheet. Okay. And I'll ask you uh, to, to tell me your first thought that has come in your mind, okay? Don't overanalyze, don't overdo anything. I'll show you a sheet and you'll have to just think what has come in your mind. Just keep it to yourself and I'll ask. Everybody could see it, okay? Now I'm showing you the another one. What comes in your mind? Just register that. First thought. Don't overanalyze. So when you saw the red color sheet, this was red. Huh? I hope it was visible red only. So how many of you thought very positively about this color? Just raise your hand. 
how many of you thought negatively about red raise your head be very honest when you saw this how many of you thought that it is negative just raise your head almost majority of you only one raised for positive aspect when red was raised how many of you saw green and you thought that it is negative none how many of you saw it as positive color beautiful very nice every one of you saw it as positive none none of you saw it as <coughs> negative that's the problem that's the problem when the market goes down we ask for bending the market and when the market is going up when market is going up it means green or red green hai right? na when market is going up nobody will ask you to shut down the market because it is it is connected with positivity right we don't see risk in that and when we don't see opportunity in red so when we start you know thinking just opposite to what is happening and we'll have to really tune our markets very mind it's very difficult it's not very easy it's not intuitive it will not happen very easily so when you see your portfolio moving up with green every day you'll be very happy you'll be enjoying you may end up spending more money with your kids with your family you may go for outing as if that money you have already withdrawn from the market and you are spending while when the it's reverse when it is in red your mood will go off and if it is consistent rapid severe it can really impact very very badly even hardcore investors can get impacted i am not talking about traders traders definitely would will get impacted but i am talking about investors as well okay so when red is shown positivity never come in mind when green is shown negativity will never come in mind that is how our mind is tuned and that is how media reports also experts will talk about in the same language and that's the problem because if we think the way others are thinking will get the same return what others are getting so we'll have to reverse that thinking process got it so this is a pendulum okay between optimism and pessimism and pessimism is pan panic selling which is red in color optimism is buying uh, panic buying fomo missing out market is moving up so this is a these are two extreme thinking during optimism or during collapse or pessimism fear of missing out versus fear of crash out so uh, very rightly uh, said by jason uh, zwick who is who has updated uh, the intelligent investor book written by benjamin graham the market is a pendulum that forever swings between unsustainable optimism which makes the stocks too expensive and unjustified pessimism which makes them too cheap the intelligent investor is a realist who sells to optimist and buys from pessimist and this will happen only when when we are able to distinguish between red and green to our advantage okay so what is buying the pessimism what does it mean buying when there is a carnage okay apply your mind and not emotions think rationally then emotionally slightly difficult because when the carnage is happening your emotions your sentiment will overrun everything else forget about uh, rational thinking because when the carnage is happening you you say for example bought today something available at 50 which was available at 70 few days ago you thought that pessimism has built in nitin said that day let me buy so you bought it at 50 and after couple of days it was available at 30 bolenge kya kiya hai abhi 30 pe le liya then it may be available at 20 so that is the severity of pessimism if you have done your work if you understand the operations of the company if you if you think that this is not going to be a damage on a permanent basis reverse will also happen and that will equally be uh, equally powerful reverse have a view to hold business for the next few years without significant returns so keep your expectations very low 
make your mind understand that you are not going to earn anything on this investment it may turn out to be negative for next couple of weeks months quarters or years expect the underperformance to continue you should be fine with that if you are prepared with this kind of requirements it will help you a lot it you you will not get troubled you will not get bothered so if we can't control our emotions we can control the attention we give to our emotions very important point so how does our uh, emotions get impacted because we get to hear the same negativity from multiple sources and that is a food for our brain because it's getting all negativity from everywhere you stop that so what are the sources since we are 24 by 7 connected social media is the first one so whatsapp telegram or different social media groups or maybe twitter then media e media print media traditional media and if still we are distracted by emotions list three activities that you can busy yourself for example for me act of ran random gratitude it works beautifully whenever i have stress i just start giving random gratitude it works beautifully you just give thanks to anything and everything that is there in your life present you seen since morning evening yesterday day before whatever comes in your mind and you start giving gratitude thank you it works beautifully it will bring your negative energy substantially that point itself works magically second is meditation again very important thing so there are couple of meditations that i practice uh, one is uh, uh, vipassana uh, that has helped me a lot uh, to calm down my nerves so i i practice that there is a uh, there is another one uh, on uh, uh, chakra balancing so that also i practice and all these are available on on youtube you can also you know if you want to join somewhere you can join but do something related with meditation calm down your mind practice that and it will not have happen overnight you say that market crash hua chalo aaj se main meditation shuru karta hu wo nahi hone wala hai na it is a long journey it's a very long journey it will take lot of time or reading books since i i love reading books uh, reading books is another aspect which helps me because i am distracting myself i am taking my attention away from the negativity if it is not reading books you like say for example music get involved with music if you love to uh, dance dance you know there are there can be multiple things multiple aspects get involved or make your brain busy in positive things that will help so correction types and impacts which we talked in in uh, in our agenda so this is a meme stock time correction almost 5 years of stagnation if i am saying meme stock everybody must be familiar with the name and i am not you know uh, interested in in talking about the names names are not important lessons are important over here it remained constant for 5 years so many memes came because it was not delivering in fact it was negative till few quarters away uh, two uh, few quarters before it just start performing but people have not seen what has happened before so this is 5 years before that 10 years history from 2007 till 2017 it was a 6.6 bagger stock plus dividends it has given 21% cagr during that period of 10 years it was taking its own time 5 years stagnation was normal so has it happened for the first time no has it happened first time with this stock no it has happened prior to that also there was a 5 year stagnation period prior to that as well but before that yes it was in that 5 years it was a 4x plus dividend in in 5 year 5 per, year period so 5 year period 4x plus dividend 5 years of stagnation 10 years of rally which is 6.6x plus dividends and it is going through a 5 year of stagnation is very normal you accept that
now price correction and these are permanently dead companies infra stocks post 2009 carnage with uh, uh, infra real estate and uh, realty and power and these are the examples of some of the infra companies what has happened during that time so this is a the, the circle in the center uh, talks about uh, or or that uh, slope talks about uh, the optimism and then the pessimism got built and when this got corrected almost uh, 95% or 95 to 98% wealth got destroyed so if somebody had invested 1 lakh people people say that I, had you invested 1 lakh in this company it would have been 2 crore 5 crore here if you had invested 1 lakh you would have it would have been 2000 or 5000 rupees so much of wealth destruction almost 95 to 98 percent yeah. see there there can be multiple reasons one of the reasons could be uh, market will find its own reason one second is if there is a growth in the stock as it happened with hul for example and it didn't work and then it performed for several years then it got stagnant after that you know same can happen with other stocks as well these are very established businesses these are not the uh, businesses which are new age which can actually move up move down this 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 businesses have very strong cash flows okay however when they have run up so fast during a period when the optimism got built in we can show a uh, period of stagnation and it could be very long term stagnation as well sorry <laughs> so names are not important people actually are so i'll tell some of the names as well uh, because everybody gets interested about the names Absolutely. Absolutely. If it, see, there are two corrections, and we'll talk about that in subsequent slide. Time correction and price correction, or both can come. Either one or both. If both are coming, then it's a very severe one. If it is only time correction, then you'll have to have a lot of patience with that. So this was more of price correction that has happened. with infra company again lot of uh, optimism got built in and then correction the realty check has happened and all this stocks got corrected so warren buffett uh, very rightly said it's only when the tide goes out you know who is swimming next now when we are talking about pessimism during this period of pessimism and after that uh, during this uh, built of optimism and then this correction in infra companies when in pessimism got built in was there any opportunity within that sector was it really offering you an opportunity to make wealth yes there were there were companies so in the previous slide we saw a couple of companies wherein you lost almost 95 to 98% and today it might have been 100% also some of these companies might not have been trading uh, but was there a company from the same sector which wherein investor made significant amount of money so there here is another example from the same sector post 2009 carnage so first correction in this company it got listed in 2009 again names are really not important so first correction in 2009 it got corrected by 50% because entire sector was thrown to the dustbin so it was 50 it got corrected 50% it it recovered then again between 2011 to 2014 because there were a lot of uh, uh, problems with the sector infra projects were not coming government was not having money there was no work going on it again got corrected by another 50% so it's not 50 50 first 50 then some rise has happened price got uh, you know moved up and then another 50% correction has come and from 2014 it delivered 23x almost 23x in 8 years and i put in the date 16 may 2014 uh, 
Any guesses? It is 16 May. Why 16 May? Yeah, 16 May is my birthday. <laughs> so, so no, that's not important. Important was that we used to conduct in those days monthly meets in Pune. And we were discussing what are the implications, where we can make money. So this was one of the beaten down sector. I said that uh, without infra, it will not work. If new government is coming, they'll have to you know, put their eggs together and some correction will happen. If we have a five year view, we can make a lot of money in this sector. That was the thought process. So this was one of the companies we discussed. So it delivered 23x in eight years. Not only that, Majiki baat dekho. From that second correction, it delivered 8 point in uh, 56x in nine years. A lot of pessimism was there. Not only that, from the first correction in less than 14 years, it is 133x. Same sector. Same carnage, same experience, different stock, lot of pessimism. If you are able to identify the opportunity, you can make a lot of money. How many stocks would have delivered that kind of returns? Not many. People may not talk about this because this is not a fancy stock. This is not a fancy stock to talk about. This is not a fancy sector to talk about because carnage was there. People will not touch. People will not talk. Glamour is not there. You're getting my point. But are we interested in glamour or making reasonable money in the market sorry no, no this is single stock i am talking about a single stock so during so where should i buy should i consider buying in this sector here or here should i buy this kind of companies or should i buy this company with 56 returns 56x return Now, the next aspect is importance of human behavior. Some of you might have seen this tweet. Elon Musk, who is the founder of Tesla, uh, very popular on, on Twitter. So one fine day, on January 7, 2021, he tweeted, use signal. Okay. He said, use signal. Now, when you are popular on social media, you have large followership, a lot of discussions start going around that. So when that is happening, what will happen? Algo will catch those terms. Some of the algos would have definitely catched. And when they catch, caught this, they started looking into what are the companies listed with Signal. They found out one which is Signal Advance INC, which was trading at 60 cents, 0 0.6 dollar. Okay. And in two days, flat two days, it was 16 bagger. It was 10 dollar next day. Even the, the promoters, founders, management of Signal Analytics would not have thought something like this would happen with their company. Why it has happened? Because Somebody has tweeted about it, that, that was a popular account, all goes work, and it really created that magic. Okay, So can we fight with algos with this kind of uh, trading? We won't. Because they will be so quick, fraction of a second, they will be taking certain decision and will be executing it. We will not be even able to punch in our password also, by the time trades would have happened. So what are the things which are in our control? Our, in our control, we have human behavior in our control. So our biggest enemy when investing is within ourselves. It's not outside. We will not be able to fight with algo if we are doing this. But we'll definitely be able to fight with algos if we are having control on our emotions. If we are also jumping in the same signal analytica case, uh, signal advanced science case, we would not have made money, we would have made losses and most of the retail investor, I am sure would have made losses over here. So success will only come when you learn to control your emotions. Apparently one of the easiest ones, but most difficult one to follow. And probably Elon Musk would not have, uh, I am sure he has not, uh, he was not talking about signal advanced science, 
he was talking about the social media platform which was equivalent to whatsapp so he was talking about use signal that signal not this signal okay so buying the pessimism important parameters to consider uh, the next slide is about uh, the framework for selecting the stock sectors and what are the things we should consider while we are doing that one of the most important slides in this presentation so what are the parameters buying the pessimism the first one is sector or company out of favor what does it mean it is not in favor no one wants to talk about it talk about this sector publicly i don't want to talk to my friends that i am buying something like this i am buying infra companies in 2009 10 i don't want to talk okay i don't want to talk about it companies in 2000 uh, uh, 2000 2001 2001 2002 post carnage i don't want to talk about it because public will be pagal hai kya because majority of the view is against that sector and when you are taking that uh, or going against the majority you will be considered as mad so nobody will talk about it hesitation to post about the company or sector as people may laugh valuations at historically low levels so that's the first criteria it's not yet over if it is no end of the story forget it look for something else if it is yes if the sector is out of favor nobody is talking about it nobody wants to own it uh, nobody wants to own publicly about this sector about this company here is something you have to look for so next one will be survivability test what is survivability test means if it is going through a pessimism nobody is interested in it will it be able to survive so first one is permanent disruption are there any chances of permanent disruption what does it mean sometime in 1991 92 okay if uh, pessimism is built and uh, there is a company which manufactures typewriter nobody is interested nobody is buying historically low levels should i buy that 2022 we know that you know computers have completely replaced them so there was a permanent disruption so if there is a permanent disruption over there in that industry in that company avoid that if yes end of the story look for something else if no then the next important aspect is debt level how high is high so i have another presentation uh, on uh, on this aspect how high is high or debt level which i did actually in in cfa forum only which is available on youtube wherein i covered several case studies about how i is high and how to test debt level so if the debt level is manageable if it is not manageable end of the story forget it look for something else if it is no if the manage uh, if the debt level is manageable it is a low debt or no debt or debt is manageable in terms of survivability it's not going to die then look for the next point which is cash flow of five good years because right now it is going through pain it is going it, it is experiencing uh, certain hurdles it's going through pessimism so look for the years which were good years when it was doing reasonably good it was earning sufficient money to service its obligations look for the cash flow in that again the cash flow is covered in that presentation which i talked about it's available on youtube uh, uh, there are several case studies on again on cash flow aspect <coughs> so if it is cash flow is not good forget it then it's a, it's a dead story so when we say that cash flow for five good years it means that previously whichever was the best five, five years, years when the industry was doing reasonably well but at that time most of the companies would be doing good cash flow absolutely so that is what so it it has that potential to reach that kind of cash flow is the point okay. but if if it turns but on the contrary uh, all those companies which were bad with the other aspects they would also be generating good cash flow in that uh, which are the bad aspects bad aspects no like uh, bad aspects in the sense that uh, the debt level so it will you will not reach to this level 
if it is bad on the dead side, you will not reach to the next point. It's the end of the story. You have reached here because you have put in the check mark yes over there. Clear? But at the same time, for the permanent destruction part also, that uh, again it is uh, from the same sector. We have uh, 10 companies, for example, the infra uh, sector. We had 10 companies. Hardly one or two companies uh, gave those kind of returns out of those 10. And mostly 6, 7 companies just went. Uh, Vanished. Vanished. Yeah. Vanished. Correct. But, but sir, how do we find that this is the one company which will not be completely disrupted? No, no. So, disruption is the permanent disruption we are talking about. Infra may not have permanent disruption as of now. Right. I don't think that, see, there is no, not so much of automation that you don't require companies and it, roads or, you know, airports would get built automatically. It will not happen. You agree to that? If that is the case, if there is no permanent disruption in that industry, then you look for one by one all these points. Then we go to the dead, then the dead. <laughs> exactly. not just the last five years. Now, my question is, generally business is a little different in terms of location, uh, capacity sizes, and it may not be really comparable in any company name or non name, let's say seven years before and today. So what exactly are we- We'll come to some of the case studies. There, I think uh, you're, I'll, I'll be able to justify with the numbers. Then I will be able to showcase. In case you have questions subsequent to that, we'll discuss. Nobody knows. Absolutely. 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 Agree. So, it's a good point and very difficult to judge because when the things are changing, it's like, you know, frog in the well. Or not frog in the well, frog, frog is put on, on a boiling uh, water and uh, it really does not know that water is boiling in a then it did, yeah, you know, it's dead. So, so is the case with our investments also. If the change is happening and we are unable to measure that change, slow pace change and it gets compounded and it impacts very badly, uh, it can impact our uh, complete investment also. So we have to be on our toes to understand what are the changes happening in our industry, how it is going to impact, uh, maybe slow measure, measurable changes. And if we see some inclinations that the changes are happening it's impacting the revenues it impact it is impacting the cash flows profitability there is a stress company is not able to recover in the margins you are definitely heading for some troubles now margins will get impacted immediately because when the changes are happening from something which is disrupting your industry your customer will not be interested in buying the products from you at the same price Where? Where? Coal, yes, yes. For example, we know because of the ESG, because of whatever compulsion, it is moving through the affected economic state. Absolutely. Now, how much time? But what if there is a urbanized Then it kills. Absolutely. It's very difficult to forecast. I completely agree. I completely agree. It's very difficult to forecast. However, market also gives you an opportunity for a very long period of time, as you rightly said, because say, for example, people were talking about ESG, coal, and suddenly coal became an important commodity, uh, which was actually shown. People were not talking about coal investments anymore. And we have seen the impact of it. Similarly, typewriter example, classic typewriter example, people were talking about it's dead since 80s actually, and took while before it really happened. So it gave a very long period of time for the investors as well. Ample time, exactly, exactly, get out. So 
the recent directly uh, I mean uh, deals from Amazon to Walmart to say something like a KTF. Uh, this buy now pay later was supposed to be like something a very lucrative type of business which they were running. So none of the other companies were listed in India, but when the directives came, it, it actually came out of nowhere. It didn't happen. It may have other challenges. That's like another factor. But yeah, it is it is probably something which they won't be doing. Correct. Should we end of story or should we no, no, we should continue since we have not yet decided that it is a permanent disruption. We have not said yes. Okay, we have not said no either. But let's evaluate the other parameters. Okay, if we are sure about the permanent disruption, we should not be going over there. Talk about the cash flow for five years. We are talking historical five years, but we are No, no, we we are not forecasting anything. We are just looking at in the uh, rear view mirror, looking at those numbers, and then we are analyzing the cash flows. Actually, it can be reverse. I'll tell you with my experience when sector is going through pessimism, competition would have been dead. In most of the companies, by the time they consolidate, huh, either they are dead or they consolidate, but that throws a lot of opportunities for the, the for the parties which are surviving, and that's where the money will be made. Something like uh, 2017 steel companies, nobody was interested. Uh, 2008 boom, we have seen what has happened with uh, you know along with power, infra, realty, the steel companies and the kind of valuations, the acquisitions which Tata or Arcelor has done. Uh, uh, in, in foreign markets, the kind of money they have paid, uh, they actually had to trouble, uh, face a lot of troubles over the uh, next couple of years. And then the consolidation has happened. Everybody was dead. Co companies were making losses at operating level. Most of these companies were in NCLT. And the consolidation has happened, few companies were remaining, and those who were remaining were making you know good amount of money. And then the boom had come from 2017, 18, 19, 20, four, five years. Uh, a lot of uh, you know, interesting thing is that when, and that is there actually in my presentation, uh, when companies are going through difficult phase, see these are smart people, they have, they're, and they are hardworking people, they are smart people, they know a lot of things more than you know, investors. Uh, investors take judgment based on you know, few minutes of or few hours of analysis, but these guys are there in that industry and they have put in everything in that so we our investment might have been you know uh, spread over 10 companies 20 companies 50 companies 100 companies but their investment is almost in one company so their risk is much higher so when they are there in 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 that industry and uh, uh, when they are going through this difficult phase they take a lot of corrective measures okay which has happened say for example no no i am talking about good companies only see jit I said that uh, those were the times of uh, optimism. See, JP, you are talking about optimism. Had the had it been in pessimism with all the survivability metrics checked in, uh, it would have done wonders. It would not because they were already in trouble. You're getting my point. Or say, for example, hotel industry, which is there in the uh, in the case study, uh, uh, 2020, 21 rather, I would say, when the second uh, wave hit us. Uh, it, it, it hit us very badly and it impacted the most uh, tourism hotel industry. So the companies which were which uh, which had a question mark on their survivability, they took a lot of actions in terms of cost savings and this became permanent in nature. You know, because when the things were going well, uh, you were taking it a lot easier. But when things were going against you, you took several measures uh, which will help you survive. That is first. Second, when you survive, some of those measures will become permanent in nature. 
So therein your cost savings will come into the picture, which will be permanent in nature. Uh, I won't like to specifically talk about telecom sector because only three uh, players are there, rather uh, three and a half players are there. <laughs> so I won't like to talk about it. It's uh, uh, But it's uh, definitely an opportunity. It's a recommended stock there over there. So I won't like to discuss more in, in that. Yeah. So let's go through the presentation. Let's go through the, you know, I know that there will be questions. Uh, but let's go through the entire flow and if you have additional questions after that, we'll answer. I love to answer, but again, uh, the organizers will have a trouble uh, overshooting the time. Yeah, exactly. It will be covered. Most of these questions are covered actually. Absolutely. So I have not reached actually 25% of my presentation so far. So, uh, the next part is uh, large seller. Uh, it may not sound very intuitive. What, what does it uh, mean? See, large seller means uh, uh, sellers primarily with more than 1% kind of stake. Okay, This could be mutual funds, FIIs or ultra high investors, uh, ultra HNIs kind of investors. If they are selling in your company, be a little careful especially with small and mid cap kind of companies and they may have their own reasons to sell we may you know are isne becha kyu becha isne becha na to maybe bechta hu it can be reverse he might be say, selling it for some other reasons and when he is selling he will bring down the price because his quantity is so much he will bring down the price so be little sensitive if it is going below 1% be very watchful careful how the price is behaving I don't talk about the price as such. I don't focus on price. But here you focus on the price as well. If he is uh, continuously selling, if a mutual fund is holding 5, 6%, 7% and start selling, he will bring down the price. And he will have a mandate to complete this entire selling in next couple of months or quarters. So if it is yes, then reconsider, wait. If it is no, are there few survivors in that industry? Consolidation is, is consolidation happening in that industry? If it is, yes, my friends, you have got a gold mine over there. Now, there are few more aspects over there. Oh, gold mine, uh, like 2017. Uh, so a lot of steel companies were getting bankrupt. They were referred in NCLT. Those who survived. And they are actually, uh, large sellers were also there. Some of those surviving companies. So they also brought down the price and the stocks became, you know, the surviving stocks became 10 bigger, 20 bigger, 30 bigger, 40 bigger within a span of 2-3 years. That kind of money was made. Now, in addition to that, is management buying shares during this pessimism? Very good signal. Okay, May or may not be all the time, but here when the pessimism is getting built and he is buying, he is confident about the company, if he is buying big, Beautiful. Are there cost reduction initiatives which we were talking about a while ago? And there would be actually, and most of these companies would be hard pressed to save cost. They'll, they'll do everything possible. Are there consolidations which we already talked about, few survivors? Are they going through low capacity utilization which will be hallmark of any way of pessimism if they are at low capacity utilization, maybe 20-30% of the entire capacity and if tight turns, if th things become better, that will be uh, kicking in the operating leverage for you. And if there is a debt, manageable debt over there, that will kick in financial leverage for you. So operating and financial is a deadly combination then. All your debt will come into uh, market cap over a period of time in this entire enterprise value. It can become uh, really multi -bagger. And is demand improving? So look at the signs if the demand is improving over there. If all this is yes, go ahead. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the framework for buying the pessimism. Uh, it's not easy to follow. It's not very intuitive. It's difficult to follow. It's difficult to practice. But if we bring in that mindset, it will help us uh, becoming you know better investors. And 
at the bottom is the corporate governance there is no compromise on the corporate governance so if a company from the infra infra sector is having corporate governance issues better to avoid that again those points are covered in another presentation that i talked about okay so buying the pessimism uh, here is a case study from paper sector between 2020 to 21 what has happened it's a highly cyclical business multiple parameters affect this industry uh, uh, the global demand or pulp prices energy prices lot of you know moving parts are there affecting this industry so there were multiple headwinds and tailwinds coming and going so stocks were down almost 60 70% uh, in a year and a half between 2018 to 20 and this is i'm talking about before covid came so covid struck us around march 2020 okay before that from 2018 till 2020 uh, the stocks were already down by 60 70% paper stocks and sector was facing severe headwinds multiple headwinds global you know uh, over capacities people were talking about energy prices were going up pulp prices were going up impacting those who were not having backward integrations no one wanted to publicly own this sector this is a common thing that you will see across all experts were citing lack of demand and deteriorating pricing power as the possible reasons for the death of the sector difficult period did help companies put their eggs together and there will come external unknown reasons to rebound and there were some unknown reasons which had come impacted the margins growth of steel companies in 2017 china you know pollution people started talking about and then steel demand just went up uh, similarly here in paper also we'll see some of those things have happened now when the mojo is back back everyone is on another another extreme and counting on global shortfall multi year bull run and uninterrupted paper demand and huge growth so everybody is looking at this and they forgot this okay so there are certain things that never change so actually it was passing because uh, uh, there was ban on plastic that also impacted uh, the demand for paper so some external factor would come in aur majhe ki baat ye hai ki jo बोपेट और बीओपीपी बनाते हैं बिकॉज दे आर दार्टी विच आर अफेक्टेड बाय सिंगल यूज प्लास्टिक देर स्टॉक ऑल्सो डिड वेरी वेल बिकॉज ऑफ सम अदर रीजन हाँ सो आई सेट द लाइक इन टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन स्टील द एक्सटर्नल फैक्टर सी वॉट हैपन्स वेन वेन द एंटायर सेक्टर इज गोइंग थ्रू पेसिमिजम ओके a uh, lot of consolidation will happen because of that supply will get you know uh, reduced substantially and if it is global commodity it will impact severely everyone so supply was coming down in steel sector companies were going bankrupt they were going in nclt in india for example and there would be some reason which will emerge which will impact the demand of those companies if there is no permanent disruption so in steel Uh, china became the reason initially china was the reason later on lot of other things have happened but china was the first kick when they announced for uh, controlling the pollution in chinese cities and because of that they shut down many factories you would see some of those videos and because of that the demand for steel from other countries other companies started doing you know moving up yes something will come when when the there is a severe pressure uh, on the companies to survive okay now i am talking about couple of case studies over here uh, before i do that uh, let's read uh, the disclaimer there is a case study and not a recommendation uh, recommended stock to our clients we own it to uh, we may exit to without any notice so we may do contrary to what we are saying so be sensible to this paper stocks vescos paper mills it was at uh, uh, i don't know it is if it is visible uh, 
it reached almost 400 rupees in uh, uh, 2018 9th november 2018 and i talked about 2018 to 2020 2020 saw a bottom of 135 this was during COVID, but before COVID, as you can see on the chart, it was already coming down. And then it moved up one side really from 135 to 625. We recommended this uh, on 2nd September 2020 at 185, still in our coverage. Our estimate was in good times, it could achieve an EBITDA of 800 to 1000 crores while it came down to 260 crores in financial year 2021. And we'll see some quarterly numbers and some yearly numbers on the subsequent slides. So if you have any questions, just hold on. This is the second case study from the paper sector, JK paper. Again, a recommended stock till recently. It went up uh, and made a top at 185 in 2018 and got corrected to 75, almost half. And it was already, you know, correcting before COVID hit us. And now it is at 428. It was recommended on 22nd Feb 2021 at 137. Our estimate was in good times, it could achieve an EBITDA of 1200 to 1400 crores, while it came down to 563 crores in 2021. But we recommended prior to uh, uh, you know, financial year 21 numbers. Why we did it, I'll tell you. So uh, this is the p and of uh, JK paper. As you can see, between 2021, uh, revenue came down from 2,500 crores almost to 2,200 crores. While EBITDA margin came down from 25% to 12%. And, and uh, uh, between 19 to 20, when the stock was already correcting, uh, the revenue actually went up from 2000 crore to 2500 crores. EBITDA margin was already showing weakness, 26 to 25%. But here are the more, uh, more details about West Coast. Between June and September 2020, okay, margins were at 4 and 5%. Historically at lowest level because COVID was there. And then it and it was already coming down and this numbers uh, since it is a cyclical business uh, it has to be uh, you know uh, compared on a yearly basis year on year basis but december it covered little bit 10% 17 19 and then it moved up similarly for jk paper revenue was coming down from 2019 itself 3200 to 3000 and then 2700 uh, EBITDA margin moved up from 27 to 28 and then came down to 20. The profit really got hit 475 to 240. Quarterly results again 4 5%. Similar kind of trend. Uh, and yearly uh, EBITDA margin was already coming down 25 to 22 and then it improved a little bit 24%. But there was a lot of pressure over there. Now moving to uh, the next case study, which is capital goods sector again 2020-21, and it was a uh, this sector was face, facing issues on a multi-year basis. Uh, the investors were tired, and if I say they were dead, it won't be wrong. We'll see those charts. But we, before we do that, let's understand what has happened in this sector. Uh, there were consistent headwinds, headwinds only, only headwinds. Pre-COVID because there were headwinds in terms of uh, 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 the raw material prices. Still, still they, were, they were maintaining margins. There were some ups and downs on a quarterly basis. And because of that, the stocks started uh, showing weaknesses. And, and demand was also in question. Though this, these two examples where the companies were doing reasonably well, there were many others which did not do well. So industry-wise, they were not doing really well during that period. So, uh, India's engineering exports was almost stagnant during eight years period. And in this engineering exports, which is showing 
almost flat uh, over a period of uh, eight years, there was one component which was iron steel products and made up uh, products made up of iron and steel. If we remove that, because 2017 onwards, that industry started doing well. If we remove that, it was actually negative. So strictly speaking, capital goods sector was not doing really well. So capital goods is called the mother of all manufacturing industry. And there were several changes that has happened. Uh, uh, demonetization was one, GST was second. All these things were impacting the industries, including capital goods. And uh, uh, by definition, any good, uh, that uh, any goods that is used to manufacture other products either directly or indirectly is called capital goods uh, strict definition and in India capital goods industry contributes 2% of the GDP while worldwide China in China it contributes 4% in Germany it contributes 3.4 in South of Korea it contributes 2.8% so it is not a significant contribution which capital goods industry was making. The performance of capital goods sector is directly linked to the overall health of manufacturing sector, which was again in problem. And prior to that, if you look at 2008-9 period, uh, which we'll see on the subsequent slide, there was a lot of capacity built in, a lot of investments have happened. And these capacities were not getting completely utilized. For example, in power that has happened. When those capacities were not getting utilized, additional capacity won't come, if additional capacities are not going to come, capital investments will not happen, capital goods sector will be in trouble. So one of the major contributors in engineering exports is iron, say that we already talked about. The sector has the highest number of recommended stocks uh, in our uh, coverage and uh, two research services that we provide. And why we have done that, I'll tell you, because so much of pessimism was there in, in the sector. Uh, while export was in trouble, import was rising. Okay, so import was going up, uh, and TND equipment demand was projected to go up further. The country meets almost forty percent of its demands of capital goods through imports. So we we don't manufacture we didn't manufacture very high end equipments. We had to import those. That was the one of the reasons. And if you look at uh, the growth of capital goods or contribution of capital goods uh, uh, was vis-a-vis -vis IIP numbers from 2015 till 2020, uh, a six-year six period, uh, the CAGR of capital goods sector was minus 0.4%. So badly hit. And the manufacturing capacity utilization that I talked about was almost stagnant over here. If you can see, yeah, here. So almost stagnant and then it came down because of COVID and then started picking up again. Again, some of the case studies, so the same disclosure is applicable. So this is the first talk, TD Power Systems Limited uh, in 2014. And it's a multi-year problem. So 4, 480 crores, then 597, then it came down to 507, 380 moved up to 435, 459. It started showing up some uptrend from 2018 onwards. The OPM actually came down from 11% to 3, 2, 3, 2 kind of operating margins. And they were making, of course, losses at uh, bottom line level. What has happened in 2021-22? We'll see. Balance sheet, very strong balance sheet. It's a zero debt company. Uh, they had actually cash on their books. Uh, whatever debt that we see is mostly working capital kind of debt. They did buyback also in 2019. So uh, equity got reduced from 33 crores to 31 crore. Despite having all these troubles, there's no equity dilution. I love such kind of balance sheets. So zero debt, cash positive, no equity dilution and buyback. So uh, its IPO came in 2011 at 261. It went up to 400 and 54 or 450 2014 when company was doing reasonably well uh, from here uh, actually some some uh, demerger was there so don't take this number 2012 number uh, take from this number when 2014 it came down again from 9% to 5% but it was moving up and when those numbers came in 2014 numbers start it started the downward slope 
and saw bottom at 77 rupees in covid period and now at 581 we recommended somewhere in on 10th fab 2021 at 150 rupees so this is the slide we saw so what has happened in 21 22 this started getting reversed now 594 797 trailing 12 months 839 and margins are back 12 percent 12 percent 12 percent Actually, we considered this in 2018, but we were not sure about, uh, uh, see, we collect a lot of other inputs also from the ground, okay, a lot of scuttlebutt that we do. And uh, we were not only analyzing TD power, but we were analyzing the entire sector because it was going through a lot of pessimism. So we were not really sure that reverse is happening, okay. The pessimism is there, but if I can be a little right in my entry, it will help me otherwise I will have to show a lot of uh, patience in this company. So we wanted to avoid that. So when we were right in one sector, one company, we would be right in many other companies as well. And that is what has happened. No, no, no technicals. We don't do technicals. Numbers and ground information only. Okay. Now look at the quarterly numbers between September 19, December 19 and March 2021. 139, 135, 151 and the margins were improving 7, 5 and then again 10. But look at uh, the, the yearly numbers uh, from March. So since I don't have uh, the previous quarterly numbers, I won't be able to uh, compare that on a year to year basis. But since we know that it came down to 2%, 3%, these margins were improving at a very good pace over here and then it uh, again went up from 10% to 11% and then to 13% so that kind of growth has come and when we saw this trend is happening and with a lot of uh, you know scuttlebutt information that we collect we were sure that this sector is turning around when you are right about the sectors there can be multiple stocks wherein you can create the basket that is exactly what we did so this is the first stock So 2020, as I said, it was minus 7% because of the COVID. The change was already visible uh, from 7 to 5 to 10 and then 15 and then 14. These numbers were really critical. That made us decide that we should go for this. Don't look at quarter on quarter number. This is lower. But if you look at year on year number, you will see a significant growth. So this is pre-COVID number, 135 and 169, 5 to 14. It's a clear sign. So quarterly, quarter three numbers were declared on 4th Feb 2021 and we recommended on 10th Feb, just six days after this numbers at 150. Uh, this is the second case study from capital goods sector again. Uh, the same disclaimer is applicable. Power industries, again the same story from 2014 to 2019. The revenue was going up, margins uh, got reduced. And because of that, uh, the company got impacted. But if you see between this period, 2021, 20, 22, and since we were right on the sector, uh, you know, everything else will get checked in very easily. So here, uh, the revenue started moving up and then the margins, though may have come down a little bit over here, but overall profits uh, really went up because revenue uh, were growing at a faster pace. The same story what we saw so December was slightly lower in terms of top line but uh, margins went up from 7% to 9% very it was little difficult to decide in this so we took little while uh, because the quarterly number again came on fourth fab for this company but we recommended in May we took little more time to decide on this we bought it 524 it is 1321 now. It, it came down from 843 till 500 and it was pre-COVID, you know, downward journey which was visible here. So buying the pessimism, NASDAQ and rush for gold. Very interesting chart I am going to put up and I am sure that most of you would have seen this before. How many of you are familiar with this chart? Seen? Huh? 
What is this chart all about? So this is my time to ask questions now. <laughs> So who invested in it? You don't remember, okay. Who invested? Actually it's there on the slide. Newton. Newton. Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton invested in it. So it was almost, uh, uh, almost 300 years ago. So what happened? Uh, South Sea company, South Sea stock, uh, which carries its names from South America, where this company was in operation. And it got some monopoly to operate in that area. And that monopoly word, that word monopoly became a reason for this rapid rise in the stock price. So Newton made an entry very smartly. Newton, you, you all would agree, one of the best minds, right? So Newton invests a bit over here and he exits happily. But then his friends got rich with the same stock. That troubled him. So he re enters with a lot more money. And then he exited over here. Okay. When he exited, he was almost bankrupt. So, what he said, very famously, he quoted I can calculate the movement of the stars, but not the madness of the men. And same chart after 300 years was visible in NASDAQ. The companies rush for gold in IT companies, infra, uh, IT companies which are going to change the world was visible. Here is the NASDAQ chart. It was down during COVID. It went up like this. From 6,800 and this is the chart of the index. I am not talking about individual stocks. They would have done really well. So I am not talking about South Sea. I am talking about the bundle of South Seas. And then it came down. So one of the, the companies which was focusing investments in new age companies was uh, ETF, uh, ARK Innovation ETF. I don't know if you heard, I'm sure uh, you would have, Kathy would. So it went up from 37, uh, bottom of March uh, 2020, till 156. And from 156, it is now at 40. It's below pre-COVID level. It lost all its gain. And most of the investor, without having the numbers in front of me, I'm telling you, most of this investor would have come near top. And why I can tell you with more with this high certainty, I'll tell you about that as well. And they would have exited somewhere here. These are the statements of Kathy Woods or some of the interviews, or YouTube podcasts, she, she does very frequently. Stock picking rock star Kathy Wood is the anti Warren Buffett. Okay. Now look at how it compares with uh, Bakshar Hathaway over a period of five years. Five years is a very reasonable time period. ARK is 37% up. Bakshar Hathaway is 70% up. So turtle has moved actually over the rabbit. Not only that, it could not outperform or it rather it underperformed NASDAQ. NASDAQ return during this period is almost 100%. It is 37% for ARK innovation. Now, NASDAQ, uh, uh, we talked about, we talked about IT companies investment, uh, investments uh, by a variety of investors over there. It didn't stop there. So it didn't stop US investors. Indian investors were also very interested during that period because a lot of media discussions were around those kind of, you know, peaks. So international funds and equity funds with overseas investments started coming in from India also. So out of the total 89 funds analyzed, 56 were launched between 1998 to 2020, which is a period of almost 22 years. 
while 33 were launched only in one and a half years. 33%. So there was so much of rush from India also. Out of 33 funds launched between 2020 to 22, 21 are negative. 11 are positive. And out of 11 positive, only one has bitten the benchmark index in the last one year. What do you do with uh, so much of optimism then? You need to be more careful. And why I could say with a lot of certainty that most of these people would have come near the top is this reason. So during this period of uh, optimism, we got several investor inquiries asking if we can provide research on NASDAQ, NASDAQ listed companies. Said, boss, we can't do that. We are focused on in India and we feel that India has sufficient opportunities and we'd like to work only in Indian companies. Right now, we don't have uh, the, the wherewithal capabilities, resources available to research the NASDAQ listed companies. If you are interested, Indian companies. No, we want IT companies from USA. I said, we, we don't actually trade also over there. No, no, I'll show you how to trade. So somebody showed us how to trade. So one of the investors showed us the entire, you know, which broker, where, what is the margin, what is the money they require, and how would you trade, all those things. And it was during that period of, you know, peak, near that peak. And none asked post carnage. None, not a single inquiry about investment in NASDAQ listed companies. I'm not saying that invest in NASDAQ companies, but I'm saying this is the investor behavior. Buying the pessimism, uh, IT companies in 2017, uh, all around negativity in 2017. So this is uh, an analyst, uh, ex JP Morgan, HDFC Securities, Economist, MBA Finance, ringed in Asia Money, that is how she defines herself. What she is saying on August 18, 2017, in last three years, under Vishal Sikka, Infosys stock rose 21% while TCS fell 1%. Six Sikka saga reflects feudal mindset of the promoters like Murthy. Okay. Now, this has happened when Sikka was asked to resign. Post that comment. Oster of Vishal Sikka in Infosys is not about old guard versus new guard. It is about inability of the promoters like Murthy to decouple for good. Somebody with such a significant history, you are lecturing them because you have social media account, you are analyst, you can say anything. And this has happened because sector was not doing well. Or nothing against uh, CNBC, they are reporting about Namura. Namura downgrades TCS stock under pressure today explains the rationale behind the do that downgrade. So not only analysts talking about that, FII is downgrading IT companies. Then some more media news it says, based on June quarterly performance, TCS stock can be expected to fall with a third when trading resumes. So June quarter result has not come well. And of course, a lot of that. Uh, one more fund manager. Uh, so he appeared uh, on Z business. Somebody tweeted, Sir, subha subha Z business par aapke darshan ho gaye. <coughs> he replied, So now you know what to do with Infi on Monday. So basically he was negative on Infi. He said, and he was very vocal. He said negative about Infi. And this is 26 August 2017. And I remember this distinctly because on the same day, same Saturday, we did a presentation to a gathering in Pune Wherein someone asked me, what are the sectors you feel are going through pessimism? Or what are the sectors that we should invest in for next three years, five years period? So two sectors came in my mind and I shared. One is IT and second one is uh, infra, 2017. Sir, IT? IT, who invest in IT? Why? No, you can invest in IT. It's not loss. product company. You don't have product company. This was the reaction of that investor. Because that is how the popular st story was fed in. Fed in. I have worked in IT companies and I feel that 
we are in services but it doesn't mean that we are not earning we are doing pretty good job and if the valuations are supporting us we should continue to make money now this is what has happened with infi between 2017 to 2019 before covid because people say covid helped them because of covid mojo back actually it was not before that it got doubled from 440 to to 840 and then covid happened and after that it again doubled so from 2017 it was a four bag it's a such a large company but before that before 2018 it was down 33% between 2016 17 covid helped uh, to get the mojo but even before as i said covid it was already up 90% when there was negativity around the sector between 2017 and 19 no one wanted to publicly own the sector it was so badly beaten down during that period if you go back and check some of the news items you will come to know experts were citing lack of inno- uh, lack of innovation and no product focus as possible reasons for the death of the sector we may not be in product space as a strong as strong as we could but overall the ecosystem in it is strong and adds to significant value to the client we strongly believe that look at uh, the pnl it was not that bad tcs again the same story from 2018 2017 lows uh, till 2018 it was doubled and after uh, covid it again doubled and it was down 20% in a year prior to that now it's an another extreme actually of all it companies so i am not recommending anything but it's another extreme actually i tweeted about it so another extreme when the stocks moved up uh, some of the mid caps so we are talking about large caps mid caps small caps actually they became multi baggers it bagger 10 bagger jc may be owning some of those so tcs again the numbers uh, buying the pessimism for ipca labs so again it's not a recommendation as i said earlier uh, and what has happened why i selected this company and how patience has to be displayed classic case over here uh, and once uh, uh, that is continued you end up getting almost 40% cagr in four and a half years 4.4 bagger so ipca labs as you know is a is a pharmaceutical company incorporated in 1949 it has uh, it is one of the 20 largest formulation companies in india uh, business segments is api business 30% formulation 70% so it is not api that is what i used to hear it is not api of course it is not it is majorly into formulation doesn't mean it it, it does not make money it does then manufactures over 350 formulations three manufacturing sites so this was the point where i was interested three manufacturing sites still under us fda import so there was us fda alert that has come on some of its sites and it has global revenue as of financial year 21 europe 28 africa 20 america 21 asia 17 cis 7, 7 australia 7 so between 2009 till 2014 it has all pharma companies if you know this all pharma companies have done phenomenally well before that period bet- between 2003 to 2009 when uh, uh, realty infra and power were doing well these companies were not doing well from 2009 unka time aaya so ipca was 15 bagger in 5 years and it hit a top of 443 in 2014 and as it happened with other companies from pharmaceutical sector that was the peak and then some of those stocks started correcting now i got interested when the ban came so i talked about outperforming pharmas uh, during last 5 years peak in 2014 ipca picked at 450 us fda ban imports uh, from ipca lab plant in mp in 2015 so this ban came in 2015 then uh, 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 us fda issues import alert to two plants of ipca labs in 2015 so there was one ban and then alert 
so i bought a small quantity uh, just 10% maybe it could have been the the quantity i would not have added further at around 310 at that time aur kuch dosto ko bola ki yaar ye liya hai at that time we were not registered we were not doing any uh, services it was friendly discussion uh, at this price is adjusted to a split ratio of 2 is to 1 then between 2016 and 18 brexit impacted it because it was having global revenue we saw in the previous slide exports to europe so brexit came in then so first was us fda brexit third was anti malarial drug hydrochloroquine banned by who it's one of the largest manufacturers in the world aur who kya karta hai wo dawai leke se it distributes in Africa, free of cost. Okay, global tender होते हैं. They are the lowest cost producer. They win, and WHO sells over there. WHO का भी ban आ गया. अभी तो कुछ बचा ही नहीं. रहे ही सही कसर. उसके बाद US China trade issues, and then Chinese raw material supply price issue. So Chinese, uh, you know, supply a lot of uh, critical material, raw material, to pharmaceutical companies, and there were. significant price hikes and uh, there was a scarcity of some of the products which again impacted its margin so i bought between 2016 to 2018 30% 20% 40% to first was 310 as we as we saw then 3230 210 320 main kharidte gaya wo puchte are bhai wo tumhara ipka ka kya hua liya tha na wo fir gir gaya maine aur liya wo fir gir gaya maine aur liya तो तुम तो यार ले रहे हो और वो तो गिर रहा है तुमको समझता नहीं और पेसिमिज्म और क्लासिक केस ऑफ पेसिमिज्म एंड रिक्वायर सिग्निफिकेंट अमाउंट ऑफ पेशेंस एंड देर वाज नो परमानेंट डिस्क्रिप्शन एज आई नो इन दिस इंडस्ट्री सो दिस वाज बिटवीन 2014 एंड 15 प्रॉफिट केम डाउन फ्रॉम 23 परसेंट टू सेवेंटीन परसेंट फ्रॉम एंड टॉप लाइन केम डाउन फ्रॉम थ्री थाउजेंड टू थ्री थाउजेंड एंड देन प्रॉफिट सब्सिक्वेंटली केम डाउन टू टेन so but prior to that if you look at between 2010 to 2014 the stock uh, the the top line the revenue was up by 2x bottom line was up by 2.33x stock price was up by 15x as we saw on the previous slide and between 2014 to 2021 when when i started buying after 2015 16 17 18 top line was up by 1.64 the close to 2x bottom line was up by 2.3x because company would have done lot of changes in saving the cost so bottom line was slightly better stock price was up 2x 2x from 2014 but if you look at the correction that has happened and when you start acquiring and averaging it out on the lower price the the returns are 4.4x because you are buying the pessimism how about buying pessimism not buying at the peak over here but buying the pessimism during this period the returns are 4.4x which is 40% cagr healthy one from the balance sheet perspective very clean balance sheet uh, the share capital is constant 25 crores no dilution uh, and then the fixed assets were going up so between this period when they were going through a lot of struggle there there was a capital work in progress the fixed assets were going up it means they were putting up the capacities which helped them later on and cash flows again were strong uh, investing cash flow were negative obviously because they were putting up the capacities and if you look at the corporate actions of this company uh, they they are constant dividend payer and i lo- love those companies so despite having all the issues they were constantly paying dividends except in 2016 they did not pay dividend in that year because they were really struggling otherwise 2011 12 13 14 15 all these years and then again they started in 2017 2016 was the year when they did not pay dividend in addition to that uh, uh, they 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 did bonus they did some buybacks so or uh, it's a relatively investor friendly company that is what i noticed 
so i was looking at why i was interested i thought that uh, us fda ban issue will get resolved okay but it did not get resolved till date as far as i know main kaha yaar ye us fda ka issue chale jayega na to usme paisa ban sakta hai operations in other countries started showing results so when management was going through a difficult period there were so many bans i talked about they started focusing on other geographies including india and then as i said something will happen some something will happen if uh, 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 if things are not going well for that industry and uh, i expected that uh, us fda ban will be lifted in fact in all quarterly calls that i attended my only question was why us fda ka kya hua every time i used to hear we appointed a foreign consultant he has done all this work we are waiting for us fda whenever they come we'll get it cleared period nothing happened but all this while they were doing other things which held them <coughs> so when covid struck in 2020 it became a game changer for them but prior to that it was showing you know upside trend covid just doubled the stock from those levels so uh, it got a special approval uh, if you remember trump actually talked about it that's a magic pill and because he said that is a magic pill they got blanket approval to sell everything in usa क्लो क्लोरोक्विन ओकुनियन जो बोलते हैं क्यूनियन बोलते हैं हम हाँ सो दे गॉट स्पेशल अप्रूवल धूल भी था ना वो बिक गया उसका उस टाइम पे इतना बढ़िया मार्जिन आया विल सी ऑन द सब्सिक्वेंट स्लाइड नाउ इट टच द पीक ऑफ 1250 एक्चुअली इट्स अ स्प्लिट प्राइस इट वॉज फोर ट्वेंटी फोर हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी सो वॉट आर द थिंग्स दैट आई सॉ पिक रेवेन्यू पिक प्रॉफिट पिक शेयर प्राइस ऑल दिस कॉम्बिनेशन वर टूगेदर सो फुली एक्सिटेड इन अक्टोबर ट्वेंटी It was a 4.4x returns, 40% CAGR. I don't track it. I don't recommend it. Uh, there's no recommendation from our side. We also considered this to be recommended for our clients, and uh, we thought that we'll recommend it at uh, 850 uh, pre-split price, 425 otherwise. But we missed it uh, because it was trading at around 900, 950. We thought that 425 will or 850 will be a, a good price with lot of margin of safety. Everything was ready. it came on that price one day only for one day and we missed it we couldn't recommend otherwise it would have been a uh, good story over there as well <laughs> so as i said they i could see visible changes improvements in other sectors uh, other areas other geographies which they were doing and i felt that uh, uh, my my assessment was that management is competent it is not a bad management that is that was my assessment so i continued that was the reason yes yes it failed actually <laughs> that is what happens so if i take down the kind of mistakes we make this will be one of them but uh, since we have a lot of margin of safety built in when we are buying uh, will still be you know safe uh, when one thing does is not happening another thing could happen and we don't know because future is not known to anyone no no see i i was very clear about buying it so i bought it uh, on Uh, different levels, different years. Whenever there was correction, we were buying. So, uh, first uh, pre-split price. Let's talk pre pre-split price because I will remember it very easily. Uh, it was trading at around eight fifty. It came down to six fifty. US FDA ban came. It was at around six fifty. I bought it first time. I think three hundred ten, six twenty. Then it came down to five hundred. Bought it. It came down to four hundred. Bought it. and again it, it's a lot of difficulties actually in buying something which is going down showing negative red everywhere very difficult and then it came down to 350 also what was threshold in your mind like 350 was the threshold i think but i i see i avoid booking losses wherein i have uh, uh, i have reasons to hold that okay 
if my reasons are gone out of the window then i'll exit it then only i'll book the losses so i avoid booking losses i have patients and i have kept you know 3 to 5 years as the period whenever i am buying with that view 3 to 5 years the period that i kept in mind so when we are keeping in mind and some of the time as i said in the previous slide wherein we were uh, trying to be more correct on the timing aspects in capital goods or in uh, in uh, paper uh, we were very clear about the changes which are happening and we were me measuring them very closely here it was very difficult okay had i been knowing that change is happening and i was i was hell bent on us fda okay i was hell bent on us fda covid came in and nobody knew about covid and nobody knew that you know this pill will work but before that they were showing improvements in their performance in other geographies started moving up it went up to 900 950 before covid came and after 950 to 2000 uh, uh, 2400 was within months अब बन गया अभी तो ठीक है देखो आप ये नंबर देखोगे ना सी इफ यू लुक एट दिस नंबर 2021 दे अचीव द रेवेन्यू ऑफ 5400 करोड़ आई डोंट हैव 2022 नाउ एंड द एबिटा मार्जिन वाज 29% दिस इज द हाईएस्ट एबिटा मार्जिन बॉस व्हाट डू यू एक्सपेक्ट सॉरी सिंपल आई सेड ना पीक प्राइस पीक रेवेन्यू पीक मार्जिन period i am not interested i made my money leave something on the table for others i must have sold it around 1900 2000 2200 2400 all this prices but i left something with an hope that somebody else should make money that's it Uh, as far as i know it has not been resolved so far <laughs> still under ban i might i am not tracking so if it is resolved good but i not heard that now the next one is uh, the covid wave i was talking about hotel and tourism sector uh, in april 2021 it's the second wave which was the peak in india it really hit us very hard i'm sure on personal level everyone will have stories but uh, it equally hit uh, very badly uh, to this sector and it got negatively impacted survival was in question for this sector now look at uh, the hotel sector versus ipka these are two different things you know top 10 hotels or 10 listed hotels of india with a combined capacity of 55000 plus rooms these are all three star four star five star kind of hotel seven star kind of hotels the combined market cap during that time was 19000 crores if you include debt of 10000 crore the enterprise value was 29000 crores ipcas market cap was 27500 crores during that period because ipca was going through optimism of course their drug worked beautifully and hotel and tourism sector was going down and nobody knew the future of this sector we were not knowing if you if you analyze it today it will be very easy but if you are in the middle of that it's very difficult you, you do not know where, whether this companies will survive or not and again some of these companies are are uh, recommended uh, many of these companies i am holding my partner might be holding we may exit again tomorrow so there is no recommendation please don't uh, uh, believe on anything uh, act sensibly when whenever you are making investments so 55000 rooms restaurants iconic brands available at a market cap of 19000 crores or enterprise value of 29000 crores average room rent was below 3500 crores are kon jayega hotel mein rehne ko abhi ghar mein ghuse log taala ban kar ke second wave chal raha hai aapko to pata hai ye delhi mein it was so bad and occupancy was not even 20 30% and wo wo bhi occupancy kon sa tha jo covid ke patient the unko bahar se aa rahe the unko bitha diya tha udhar वो सब थे सो नो वन वॉन्टेड टू टॉक अबाउट दिस सेक्टर पब्लिकली नो वन वॉन्टेड टू ओन दिस एंड टूडे फ्रॉम द मार्केट कैप फ्रॉम नाइनटीन थाउजेंड करोड़ टू सेवेंटी वन थाउजेंड करोड़ एंड इपका फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी सेवन थाउजेंड करोड़ टू ट्वेंटी थ्री थाउजेंड करोड़ ओनली वन एंड हाफ ईयर इज गॉन नॉट इवन वन एंड हाफ ईयर्स वन वन पॉइंट फोर ईयर्स 
So this entire basket is up 3.7x. Even if we have bought it in a staggered manner, it is 1.5 to 2x. Average room rents are up from 3,500 to 8,000 plus. Occupancy is 70-75% on an average. Rooms are not available. Somebody was telling me, this room lene mein bahut dikkat hua. The rooms are not available. So extreme pessimism to going through the optimism. And look at some of these properties. Beautiful. This property itself of Jaipur, Oberai Rajvilas would be worth crores actually. And if you apply just the thumb rule of any five star hotel, my friend Abhishek is sitting over here, he would be able to tell since he is from real estate. If you apply a price of two crore rupees per room, 55,000 rupees will be, 55,000 uh, rooms will be worth 1 lakh 10,000 crores. They were available at 19,000 crore. Enterprise value was 29,000 crores. But it was so system. It was so cheap. It, it is much below replacement cost. It was a no-brainer actually. So I talked about it publicly. It was a difficult one, but I did it. Uh, so May 12, 2021, I conducted a poll. Since I was talking till then to my relatives, and I do a lot of experiments with my relatives. Uh, my friends, I asked them some questions. They didn't say, Kyu puch rahe? So I asked, hey, COVID is over, what will we do? We will go. Everybody said the same thing. Everybody was inside home, in fear. But I said, what will we do? We will go. Where will we go? We will book a hotel. So I asked the same question on Twitter. And this was May 12, 2021. It was in the middle of second wave. If COVID is finished today, what is the first thing that you would do? You would plan. 71.5% said travel with family. The next one was we'll go to office, 12.5%. Really great people to hire. I am homely now, so I'll stay at home, 16%. So overwhelmingly, people were saying that they will travel with family. And that is what is we witnessed later on. Then the next day, I said... Uh, Thanks to all those, and all, more than 1,000 participated in it, uh, in this poll. Uh, and uh, overwhelmingly, they said, travel with family option. And then I said with my comment, we can imagine what is coming once pandemic is over. Tighten your seat belts for travel, hospitality, hotel, resort, amusement, tourism related companies, period. Then since I track uh, very constantly, uh, if I am going in a sector, I track a lot of parameters. I will do a lot of scuttlebutt. So subsequently, we find that uh, uh, since we were going through second wave, the second wave was already over in some of the countries, second, third, in USA, Europe, it, it got over. So I was collecting their inputs. How is their experience? What people are doing? How is their behavior? What is the experiences people are uh, witnessing over there? So their D Airbnb posted uh, that there is a huge growth that we are witnessing. And it was May 30th, 2021. Again, I tweeted. Travel post-pandemic, early signs from Airbnb. I am reasonably sure that it will come with a bang in so much abundance that the tours, travel, hotel, resort, air and hospitality industry in general won't be able to handle. See, hindsight, I'm great. But actually, this has happened. I'm lucky. Uh, if had it not happened, we would have lost all the money also. But, you know, so much of pessimism, you won't close the industry. It will work. It will return. Boss, believe. Have that trust in yourself. Uh, it will come back. It is not a permanent disruption which is happening. Then Puneet Chatwal of uh, Indian Hotels, uh, in an analyst conference calls, the question asked by a participant to Puneet, are you bullish on hotel stocks? Rakesh Junjunwala was quoted recently. So, Nothing against that analysis, but you look at the kind of, you know, questions analysts will be having in their mind because they are also troubled by the pessimism in the market. And Rakesh Unionwala is saying that uh, hotel industry looks good uh, during that period. And uh, analysts, instead of asking about the changes which this organization was making, was asking question about the stock performance in uh, pandemic year. Now... <laughs> 
this was again uh, some data about uh, the hotel companies. Uh, I tweeted the leading hotel companies. I put in their CMPs, market cap, that EV, number of rooms, how many rooms are there. And then uh, I traveled to Mahabaleshwar in September, three, four months. And after that also, you know, stock had not moved. In September also, they were available at quite decent valuations. I was in Mahabaleshwar and uh, uh, hotel was full, restaurants were full. Mind it, it was off season. Actually, September was not a season for Mahabaleshwar. Occupancy high, rates up by 40-50%, early signs. On a permanent basis, significant cost reduction. Survivors will make a killing. Just that we don't get brutal third wave. Because I was also worried, third wave happened, we Some random observations from the annual reports and con calls. The hotel industry is struggling. So what we were discussing earlier, wherein uh, we talked about uh, when we are going through difficult phase, industry is going through difficult phase, they'll, making, they'll be making a lot of changes to survive. Look at that. Industry is struggling to survive due to the ongoing pandemic. The best comes when there is a crisis at the door, observing several initiatives and measures by the companies which would have never been considered otherwise. In good times, nobody will consider, nobody will cut down on travel, nobody will cut down on unnecessary expenses. But when you are going through crisis, you will consider every penny spent and some of those costs will not return. But your revenue will, your EBITDA will improve, your profit will improve, you will be able to repay debt, you will be able to put in more capacities. Should I invest in video communication company in October 2020? third wave peak in USA. This is Zoom. Again, no recommendations. So stock was up uh, during third wave uh, in, in US October, December 2020. Uh, was up to 559 and it is down more than 83% now. So as the number of cases were going up, stock picked during that period. Look at October, December period. Picked, here it, it got picked. It was such a beautiful correlation because a lot of people were talking about uh, you know, working from home, schools from home, everybody was talking about it. So Zoom is the only option people started thinking and everybody was behind Zoom stock and it got picked during that period. Now coming to my mistakes, there are many actually, I listed two. I'm very humble and reasonable with myself and not to list so many. Uh, so there are, but before I talk about them, there are two kinds of errors we all know. Omissions versus commission. Uh, omission is less costly and commission is where the real loss of money happens. So omission is, I was considering this sector, this company, uh, this friend recommended and the stock went up 10x, I didn't invest. Error of omission. I did not analyze it properly should have taken a bigger bet, error of omission. Commissioning is wherein you invested, okay? And you made a mistake. You made a mistake and you came out of it at a loss. You book a permanent loss. So that's a costly one. And I have made both on several occasions. But there are lessons. Mistakes are unavoidable and a part of life. That is what I learned. In fact, my entry into the stock market was with a mistake. So I made a mistake, terrible mistake, which took almost 15 years for me to recover, more than 15 years. I entered somewhere in 1992 during Harshad Mehta scandal. And as you know that it sucks everyone, it sucked me also as a young college going student. And I lost a lot of money during that time. But these are unavoidable, part of life. Try to avoid repeating, especially errors of commission. That is what I learned. Avoid mistakes that can take you off the market on a permanent basis. But not so many people who are lucky enough to come back into the market. There are many who go out of the market on a permanent basis. And that's the biggest casualty. The greatest mistake a man can ever make is to be afraid of making one. So make mistake. Mistake will happen over here. So this is the first case study. Again, it is not a recommendation. And it's a 2012 case study. I take an old one. Nothing to do with today's stock price. So I made an investment post IPO in MCX. Okay. It was at around 1200 or something like that. And during that point, I was approached 
by at least three brokers to invest in guaranteed FDs. I was not a very big investor, small investor, but still brokers approached. They said five lakh ka minimum investment hai, guaranteed FD hai. Guaranteed FD kya hota hai? So they said 15% ka return aega. I said, very good, 15%. And you have to invest in NSCL, which is linked with MCX, National Spot Exchange Limited. Then, with my experience, what I've seen is, whenever somebody is talking about guaranteed returns, very high returns, be very careful. So I asked a couple of questions. I said, boss, 15% merko de raha hai, so tu focus mein to nahi kar raha hoga. You must be saving at least 2-3%, 4% for yourself, your company. Yeah, yeah. 18, 19 ho gaya. Then the company which is offering this, must be saving 2-3%, 4%. So, 22-23% 2012, if you remember, industry was going through a lot of stress. Okay? 23-24% business is going to be able to tell business is. So, I didn't invest. But mistake I did was, and I was knowing that this is connected with MCX, I did not invest because I was sure that there is a problem in NSCL, uh, NSCL trouble is brewing. But I failed to connect the dots. I should have connected that this trouble could land at the doors of MCX also, which happened actually after a couple of months. And I failed. I should have done that. Second level thinking, second level order was missed. Stock came down. I was lucky that uh, I bought at lower levels, averaged it out. But uh, it's, it's not a consolation. You failed to connect the dots. You should have done that. So that's a mistake. Ant bala to sab bala. That's okay. Ha, because I couldn't connect the dots. NSCL trouble I could see. Okay, it will come at the doors of MCX also because they are related party. It will come, and that has happened actually. I should have connected that. As an investor, that's my primary job. Second mistake of 2014 and again it's not a recommendation 2014 case study a lot of things change in this company I'm talking about IDFC limited of that time before they got the banking license so IDFC was going through a difficult phase due to loans in infrastructure pessimism a lot of pessimism pessimism both person so we went pessimism IDFC limited got the banking license in April 2014 I was monitoring it very closely so I invested in 2014 IDFC because it got banking license. I felt new vigor to handle the crisis. Crisis was there, which was there from 2008, nine loans distributed to infra power companies. It's a infra finance company that time. And those were coming back in, in terms of NPS. So, and one more thing that I thought was banking license to give access to easy money. Because a lot of retail loan will come, saving money will come, casa will improve and everything will, will be hunky-dory. And there is a professional team to handle. That is what I, I felt. In fact, uh, Mr. Deepak Parekh was on the board of uh, IDFC that time. Thought it to be the next. And you can put in any names over there from the banking sector. So what, what were the mistakes I committed? I under, underestimated the liabilities of IDFC's previous avatar before they got the banking license. Complexities in setting of a bank. So significantly complex job. Regulatory requirements of IDFC, AMC business. Demerger, merger, there were so many changes. RBI said something and then went back. So those kind of things have happened. And not taking exit when merger with Shriram Transport announced. It was killing because I, if, even if it is lost, I will continue to hold uh, if I have no reasons or not to take. And I have got biased over here of not taking an exit. Then finally, overestimating the, comp uh, the competency of the management. I thought that they are a professional team. They will be able to do that. They will hire people and will set up this bank. It will not work that way. They didn't have in their DNA to set up a bank. That was the learning. So today, it's a different avatar, as I said. Now they got merged later on with uh, Capital First. It's a different bank now. So learning is correct the mistakes early, focus on headwinds, 
do not underestimate complexities involved. Summary, it is mostly rewarding to be positive during pessimism. Avoid companies with corporate governance issues like fall after uh, right after IT raids. Uh, if you know that this company has a history of corporate governance issues, if you analyze and if you have slightest of the doubts, avoid that. But if IT raid is there and you feel that uh, corporate governance issues are, uh, you know, uh, uh, is overestimated over here uh, and IT rates may not lead to something that you may consider at that time. Uh, then focus on business, health of the organization, balance sheet, strengths and cash flows, check survivability test that we talked about, set clearly defined milestone and measure the performance against that. If things not moving as per expectation, then reconsider. Do not get perturbed when others making money in different sectors. Like in 2018, uh, banking sector was at its top. There were a lot of you know, multi-baggers which were coming in from banking financial sectors. Uh, were not there. So, not there. <clears throat> so, don't get disturbed by that. Patience, patience, patience. That's about it. Thank you. You had a question. Uh, especially, uh, you know, when you realize, like, I'm going down or, you know, uh, right now I'm uh, falling on peak, say, in it, or, uh, you know, in my portfolio, and now I'm, you know, uh, like, I'm at IC. I attended IDFC's AGM also, 2017, 16, 17, Chennai. I went for that AGM. Rarely I go, but I went there. I was sure that I had to take an exit and I, I, I had decided after that AGM that I will take an exit. After that also I had not taken an exit. That's the stupidity. For whatever reasons. When you have decided after that also you are biased, you are not taking a decision is a problem. Find a patience. So, how patient you are as an investor, that is also important. Uh, yeah. So, what I said here in the conclusion, set clearly defined milestone and measure them. So, one of the milestone was for IDFC for me was that their NPS should stabilize. Okay. Every quarter there was some other story. And people were genuinely believing. So was we, me. Here, ye last day, ye last day, ye last day. Oh, chalte chalte teen saal ho gaye. But har bar, if you had tracked IDFC, you would know, you know, 300 crore, 400 crore, some unknown, 200 crores. Aisa sab aate ja raha hai. Aray bhai, kahan se jayega? Mere hi jayega na, paisa to. I, I would have booked a loss, finally. At time value is definitely lost. At, uh, time wise, I definitely lost. Value wise also lost. Little bit. But that happens, that's part of the life. You have to live with it. But if you do not learn that lesson that you have noted down certain things and if it is not working on that aspect, if it is not working on other, other aspects also, we have to take that exit. See, it was very evident that when they were, uh, they were uh, trying to merge with uh, Shiram Transport, they were desperate. It was very clearly evident in that. Should I have exited? Hope. <laughs> See, one of the things that we should do is we should set out certain clearly defined milestones that we are looking in that company. Okay? In that sector. And if that is not getting met, not in one quarter, two quarter, but couple of quarters. And if you do see, and if you have a reasonable reasons to believe that management is not able to, to achieve those, or will not be able to achieve those in foreseeable future, better take an exit. Wait outside and see if things improve, then take another call. But till that time, don't be there in that company. And this happens when you know, things are deteriorating at faster pace. 
and they are not improving. See, if, if I look at IPCA versus IDFC, if I look at both because there also price correction has happened, IDFC also price correction has happened. But the difference was in IPCA, I could see visible improvements happening, not with the objective of US FDA, which was one of the thoughts that I had, but what they were talking about uh, growth in other geographies, which was visible. So they were putting efforts constantly, constantly, and which was getting uh, visible in their performance. So that that thing started giving the triggers. But in IDFC, there was nothing working. It was not there in place. So it, it, it was sense? already up 2x. Did you miss? I said that it was already up 2x before sense. COVID. No, no, before COVID. Because the performance was improving of the company. But doesn't it make, make it, more sense it would, to wait for the approval? And wait, even if the price rises a bit from there because... Oh, you are saying now I should have waited and should not have taken the exit? Earlier, no, earlier, before even uh, this COVID thing happened, you were there for so many years. Since US FDA was pending and there was a time correction going on. Correct. You said there are two corrections which goes, one is time correction. Since the stock was in a time correction mode, so wouldn't it be the wise decision to wait for the US FDA approval to come in and then... I don't know if US FDA will come or not, but I could certainly see that company is making certain changes which were visible, which were uh, getting reflected in the performance of the company. Why should I not give them a benefit of doubt and why should I be stuck with my own that we the US FDA, we will do investment. When the facts are changing, you can change your opinion. What is, problem? what is the problem over there? Change the opinion. If it, it would have deteriorated further, you should have changed your opinion. If facts are changing, change your opinion, period. And since sometime in uh, this pessimism, we see that the prices are coming down. So there's a saying that when the, pipe, uh, when the knife is falling, <laughs> you should wait for it to yeah. fall down. <laughs> so, sir, again, it makes sense for uh, what, what should be the entry point? You know, it's a very difficult uh, uh, thing to analyze uh, how much patience we would require. But there are certain things very peculiar to each of the industries. Okay, You are in real estate, say for example, you know, or you are in jewelry, you know, you know, what are the peculiar things, where will you make money, where will you make loss, and how the things are improving or deteriorating. So if you understand that industry, you don't require to be an expert in that industry, but you identify certain parameters which will be deciding the moving parts for that industry. And if you get pulse of that and measure that on an ongoing basis, whether they are improving or deteriorating with this company, with other companies, you will come to know whether I am in the right direction or in the wrong direction. Uh, preferably when pulse is changing. Preferably when pulse is changing. So for example, I not covered that case study. Uh, education sector. So how many of you are married? Interesting. How many of you have kids? Interesting. Good. Now tell me, when they are school going, I assume. I don't see college going. School. <laughs> okay. So, abhi do question hai mere. Pe. First is, how many of you believe that new technology, new technology, will replace books completely? Just raise your hands. New technologies will replace books. To a great extent. What about the tech that everything. So technology will eventually replace physical books. How many of you believe? Not completely, but to a larger extent. So raise your hand. Larger also means you believe that. Good. Now go back and check with your wife. Would she like to give that technology device to the kids to study? You will have the answer. He is already saying no, she will not. I know. See, I also was 
on your side in your camp i also believe the same even with tinder and other e leaders i don't remember exactly but last 10 years digital book sales have multiplied i was coming to that so there are two aspects one is there is a popular stories narration and we start believing that and we start applying everywhere we paint with the same brush everything we start believing that books are no more required only digital devices and digital de device will replace everything okay so you have the byjus of the world and they will do very well they were getting all the world of the money and they will start doing and replacing everything so you start believing in that theory but in reality it's other way the reality is books are not going to get replaced so easily it's very hard in fact impossible look at what has happened in us market and then you will realize look at the enrollment in online courses in the us market from the best of the universities and look at how many people have cleared those courses pathetic best of the universities free courses look at those numbers why it is happening because you still want physical interaction you want face to face interactions people i thought actually that schools will eventually get replaced by online in 2020 but samajh mein aa gaya hai 6 mahine mein kuch nahi hone wala but they may still replace the online schooling that's fine i am talking about books It's a different topic altogether. So, 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 I'll just give you an example. Like, yes, I'm especially interested in because I I see kids through you know um, um, all these narratives that one camp is saying you know um, you know it's a win-win situation and then there's this camp which is not this modern but it has a more you know um, with what looks like more valid argument that you know who's going to pay for this? It is some people are going to just make more money and then it will just be you know done. So it's like what. Well, When we are going to move towards free market, yes, people can't make money off of the yes thing, right? Because uh, unless there are interventions by governments and you know through regulation and stuff, you can't make money through yes thing. So, uh, so this is one thing that I could never decide on. You know, like which camp we should. See, play. human race is very smart. Okay, if we are believing that ESG is going to replace everything, which is non-ESG, which is polluting. may happen okay however if the cost is going up substantially people may not agree so either those prices of all the green related things have to come down or there will be a middle path which will be found out okay for example one of the things that i see a clear trend which was neglected post variety of reasons is nuclear power okay i think it is going to come back very strongly very very strongly i may go wrong but since you are talking about the trend that is the trend i definitely see a strong possibility i am still studying i can go wrong as i said but that is a strong possibility because that's that could be a middle path between both coal versus you know a pure esg pure esg is again you know you are saying that electric cars yeah are they not polluting where are they getting the energy from and what kind of pollution it will create we are not talking about that that or for for example solar panels to generate energies energy what are they going to do with the uh, with the environment eventually they may have a life cycle right 20 30 years whatever is the period what will happen with those panels so so we'll have to look at the the balancing act between these two the cost versus the benefit and there is a middle path which will come so where are we now have we priced it in or is more longer why no i think we are tilting towards uh, cost benefit now we are tilting world is realizing already <laughs> it's 
so online platform will remain there so is the case with uh, theaters absolutely absolutely theaters give see don't look at theaters as the theaters of 80s they change a lot one their size may reduce further so if you had earlier say for example 200 300 400 seater kind of theaters they come down in size maybe 100 seaters they may come down further maybe 20 30 40 seater very small micro theaters but that experience will not go away that experience will will be there and people do not go theaters just to watch cinema over there okay it's an experience for which they go okay it's like you know so that is the example i give i think that will be better one you got a 45 inch 50 inch or maybe 100 inch screen installed in your theater at home you can watch any place in the world live agree watch goa live don't go to goa experience on on screen will you be able to do that you will have to go to goa to leave that experience isn't it same is the case with this the experience is different when you go with the family it's a family outing it's a part of that entire experience part of that tourism okay that experience you can't take away from them it will be it will it will coexist 100% Correct. Then they know it is like they made uh, surround sound, they made uh, multiple sensors, they made a lot of flash seating arrangements. Maybe it may go, go more personal life than uh, they may have, uh, say, 3D is the starting point. They may know it further, but absolutely so that is what i was indicating alluding to the fact that we will have a smaller theater so for example 30 40 seater kind of uh, which may give more personalized experience increasing the experience more than correct with each and every smaller detail absolutely even the the gourmet facility they are giving in the uh, theaters correct more of a restaurant kind of feel yes so director's cut is uh, generating more revenue than the normal sales <laughs> Yeah, yeah, true. The way SUVs are more sensitive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, one is uh, which sectors you are seeing your passive income right now? Uh, second, uh, what is your business model? Uh, business model of Aura? Yeah, of Aura. Like how do you operate? You know, you are a TV industry investment advisor. Even, uh, I don't know how to make that. I think this will not be a forum to answer that. Uh, we'll answer that uh, after this. It's a personal question. I'll answer that. I'm more than glad to tell you. But it won't be right because it's getting again recorded and will be put on YouTube. Uh, everybody will be watching it. And why should I market my? I don't do that. We'll talk. After. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I wanted to understand uh, at the portfolio level when you create these. Yeah, uh, how would I say that? That's a very difficult one. Uh, see, the sectors uh, where I see not a lot of pessimism, but a bit of pessimism is infra is one, cement is another one. Cement. Uh, these are the two sectors, definitely, I remember. Uh, there are a few more, but they have actually moved up. So I won't put them in strictly in uh, in pessimism. Education was definitely one, but it has gone up by almost hundred percent. Not too many companies. One of them is recommended by us. I don't want to talk about that, uh, but it has moved up. So there was a lot of pessimism because of online education and whatnot. Sector was not doing well. There are some tailwinds because of that. Things are improving. Uh, fintech. Uh, yeah, it's a, see, we come with IT background, so we might be a lot of we might be carrying a lot of biases against that, uh, and uh, we'll be more comfortable when the valuations are uh, are in our favor, and we'll have to see if they will be able to generate cash flows. I'm not interested in profits, uh, but cash flows, operating cash flows, uh, where I have still doubts. 
so i'll be i'll be more careful in uh, dwelling if uh, uh, if those companies uh, can show uh, uh, the strength to generate cash flows uh, then i i would be keen and of course at a lower valuations pharma is interesting Yeah, we talked about fintech only, right? So fintech, all new age companies under the same basket. Okay. PSU, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, PSU definitely we are interested. Financial services, PSUs, they will do well. Of course, we have recommendations, so we are biased also. हाँ, so cycle है, boss. आप आपको मालूम है क्या? I have one presentation actually on PSUs. 2001. आपको मालूम है NPA कितना था PSUs का? What was the peak NPA here in 2018, 19? जब सब cleanup हुआ था? 15. हाँ? So it was around 20, 25. Go back and check 2001. Cleanup हुआ? Vajpayee government did lot of work on that. And then stocks were multi-baggers. When industry started performing, capex hua, sab hua. Wo cycle return hua tha na, wo financial services you know, deliver a lot. Possibly, ye sab connected hai na. So, aapne ek dot connect kiya na, to dousra. Achche ke liye connect kiya. Wo bure mein hum chhod gaya tha MCX mein. Achche mein connect karna, karna hi chahiye. So, agar capital goods is doing well, it will have you know, ripple effect on many other things. Because it's connected with manufacturing, as I said, it will have significant impact on many other sectors. Financial being one of them. Absolutely. So if you see the growth rate already uh, uh, on credit uh, credit growth rate of uh, banks, uh, both private and uh, public sector, it is very high now. Higher than the deposit one. So it's a it's a good place to be in. हाँ यू हेड कुछ वी डोंट अलोकेट एनी एनी अलोकेशन वी डोंट गिव एनी अलोकेशन क्वेश्चन इज ओवर देयर पर्सनली ऑन अ पोर्टफोलियो लेवल आई हैव सम पॉलिसी ऑन द अलोकेशन इन इंडिविजुअल स्टॉक्स that I follow as a discipline. I covered part of that in one of the presentations. I think in CFA presentation, I have covered that. Wherein I, I have three level of portfolio, A, B, C, A, where I'll be more confident. I've done a lot of work and there are some parameters which are meeting. Then I'll allocate between 70 to 90% of the funds. Second is B, I'm still not sure. And those, are, those could be a little longer also. Second is I am still not sure. So within one year, I'll decide. So I allocate maybe 10% max of the total funds and see is something is ne bola yaar bahut acha dost hai isne stock bola chalo le lete maximum 5% so something like that to manage the entire risk c can be zero also so this is personal level but at uh, client level we don't do because we are using research analyst license so there we don't allocate that. Do you also buy or recommend growth stocks and if you do what so we know So growth stock valuation is the key problem. Okay, when things are moving up and companies are performing, we try to extrapolate those numbers as if they are going to reach to the moon. There can be some reality check, and that's where the problem will come in. But don't extrapolate. Be very conservative in your numbers, especially when the when the market is in up cycle or the sector is in up cycle. Be very conservative. Three to five years. Uh, but things can change very fast also. See, market if it is in uh, bull phase, it can reward you within one year also, what you expected in three years. Right. So you should be conservative and look at 
correct 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 and if you have to exit you know uh, you can exit on an increment basis also so every price rise you exit there can be different strategies that you can apply and when you say five year time horizon is it for a reasonable valuation or just learning process no 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 it's a reasonable valuation we are talking about everything has to be directed with valuations and see valuations can also uh, go up from high to madness kind of levels okay for example in year 2000 if i felt that uh, infosys at 50 pe is very expensive 2200 and it is a real case study because i was there in ahmedabad uh, and one of the friends was uh, there as a roommate he had invested at around 6000 that time सेट यार ये तो बहुत महंगा है लिया वो बढ़ गया उसने और ले लिया कह रही ये तो और महंगा हो गया ये तो इस पर तो बेचना चाहिए तो और बढ़ गया वो 1200 हो गया 12000 हो गया ये तो और महंगा हो गया तो उसने और डाला वो 15000 हो गया उसने सब कुछ डाल दिया वो 18000 हुआ उसके बाद वो कहाँ आया वो पता है ना वो एग्जिट तो लिया नहीं सो वेन इट्स मूविंग अप योर कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल गोज अप इट शुड कम डाउन सी I showed you this two colors, na? This should be visible, not this, not this, and that's that doesn't happen very easily. I don't know. I I don't track. I I never uh, talked about ITC. <laughs> so let's not talk about the stock specific, uh, but let's look at when the pessimism is there. I would be more interested in those sectors where pessimism is going on. See, I don't uh, understand crypto as much as I should, so it won't be right on my path to give a judgment on crypto. But I feel that uh, if uh, the solid value is not there behind any asset asset class to deliver, it won't survive. It will be difficult to survive. If there is a reason which tells us that there is a value <coughs> behind this asset. then it should be be considered i am so far not clear about uh, cryptos uh, uh, value uh, which it would deliver uh, technology might the technology behind crypto might but crypto itself i am not too sure and there are there can be so a lot of regulations coming in and uh, do you think that uh, uh, banks uh, would allow that to happen to uh, to uh, get this entire control going out of their hands they won't very difficult but technology could even so my question is mainly on the technology aspect so uh, if the specific assets we know they may come and go that is true yeah absolutely technology is wonderful should survive and may have uh, different applications coming in Ah, sorry, sorry. Is there a similar framework for how to exit? Is it like a reverse of this? So when when everything when mm -hmm. you are talking about something. Yeah, yeah, reverse of this. So you look at if and exit is little difficult, difficult because uh, when you are exiting, you are selling during the optimism, and you don't know what is the end of that optimism. uh you start keeping certain price in mind exit gradually that can be one st strategy you go with the thought that you are leaving something on the table for others to chew to enjoy and you give it and say thanks and don't look at that again don't trip you already made money let somebody else also make money you will have less trouble with that 
Otherwise, you will be making the same mistake what Newton made. Uh, so, hotel, we are still positive. We have exited from uh, one of the hotel stocks though. Uh, primarily, we were little concerned about the valuations and we had the limitations on the number of stocks and there was some other risk reward opportunity. So, that, that was the reason we, we gave an exit call. However, I still feel hotel is the sector. It has not seen the peak so far. It can go wrong, but... But you know, five years ago, rather three years ago before COVID, if you had talked to anyone about hotel sector, one of the comments was, this sector will be completely displaced by Airbnb. Jarvati nahi hotel scheme. But nahi hua. Nahi hoga. Okay. Uh, doesn't mean that I like hotel as a sector, huh? I don't like hotel as a sector. We never invest. But assets were available at mouth-watering levels. 25% of the replacement value. Why should we not consider? Let my biases be kept aside. Let me consider. Because hotel is a difficult sector to make money. Similarly, air travel is a very difficult sector to make money. Consider those aspects as well. So, in normal course of action, I will not consider hotel as a sector to invest. ডিরেক্টর